This is a beautiful place. These are the natural surroundings of my home in the Midwest. It's quiet and peaceful, even with the highway less than a mile behind me. If you're like me, you don't think about what happened on the ground you're standing on long ago. But here, over 800 families were forced out of their homes. I'm going to tell you why. The Americans released a highly toxic chemical dispersed during the Vietnam War. Agent Orange. Between 1962 and 1961, the United States military sprayed nearly 20 million U.S. gallons of various chemicals. It was sprayed as an herbicide, both in the jungle to clear the way for soldiers or crop fields to starve the Vietnamese and attack their agricultural economy. The Vietnamese who were directly exposed suffered the worst effects. But even now, people still suffer from it. Today, the chemical causes birth defects, illnesses, serious skin diseases, and a variety of cancers in the lungs, larynx, and prostate. Once these chemicals were shipped across international waters, they created hell on Earth. In 1925, an ad appeared in the St. Louis Times a new summer community based on the name of the newspaper that held it, Times Beach, Missouri. One could purchase a lot for almost $10 up front and $250 monthly for a total of $67. Adjusted for inflation, that's only $1,000 in 2021. It was an area of land 20 miles west of St. Louis next to the Merrimack River and only five miles east of the modern theme park Six Flags, St. Louis. Not long after Times Beach was founded, Route 66 was built and passed directly through the vacation town. A bridge was built for easier flow of traffic, and it quickly rose in popularity as a great spot to cool off in the Merrimack River. At a time, over 2,000 people were living in the town, along with the many daily visitors during the summer. In 1968, three years into the Vietnam War, over 200 miles away, in Verona, Missouri, the Hoffman Taft Chemical Company made a business deal with Northeastern Pharmaceutical, also known as Napaco. They leased out space in their factory to increase the production of Agent Orange components. The production created a byproduct called dioxin a man-made chemical that comes from burning cigarettes, tires, or of course, making herbicides. Dioxin is extremely toxic and is the portion of Agent Orange that had the worst effects on anything it touched. It was kept in a black tank in the Verona factory. The tank was filling up and needed to be disposed. What they didn't know was that it should have been destroyed. Russell Martin Bliss is a contractor based out of his farm in Wildwood, Missouri. He is your typical red-blooded American. He has his own chicken farm, a pet dog, and he loves his wife Evelyn and son Jerry. Bliss takes waste oil and disposes it in a useful manner. He sprays the waste oil on dirt roads and fields to prevent dust from kicking up. Times Beach became one of his clients in 1971. Its numerous dirt roads were a dust problem. Unfortunately, the 
town was unable to afford paved roads after its founding. Gary Overton, the mayor of Times Beach, considered Russell a friend. He even had a place to stay in the community any time he needed. One day, Bliss was contacted by a new client, Northeastern Pharmaceutical. In a 2012 interview, Bliss was quoted saying, I was not eager to go out and get the stuff. It was a 550 mile drive from Wildwood. He would make six trips there and back, hauling over 18,000 gallons of waste. Russell even stated he saw the workers at the plant dumping the material into a nearby lake. Bliss felt he was committing a reputable action, taking it away and recycling it onto dirt roads, rather than leaving it in the hands of the dumping company. Not long after collecting it, Bliss began spraying the waste. One of his clients was Shenandoah Stables near Moscow Mills, owned by a woman named Judy Pia. It was a horse stable where they are boarded, trained, and where people learned to ride. It was a very large stable with dozens of horses. Bliss took his oil and sprayed the arena where they would range. Over the coming weeks, patches of hair began to fall out. Mold and cancer cells grew on their bodies. They grew sicker over time, many times needing to be put down. Not long after, Piat's daughters began developing flu-like symptoms. Piat suspected Bliss. She called him over the phone asking questions about the oil. He stated that it was only crankcase oil, meaning it came from automotive use. The Piats went to stay at a relative's house but one of the daughter's symptoms became so severe she was hospitalized with an inflamed bladder and severe internal bleeding. The CDC came and investigated. They sampled the soil and began their investigation of the contaminants. 60 horses died in the stables from the contamination. The problems caused by the dioxin did not go away. Piat's daughter would have many more hospital visits, with symptoms resembling arthritis, gastrointestinal problems, nosebleeds, and nausea. Bliss didn't know it, but the CDC was hot on his trail. Though they didn't find out about Times Beach until years later, Bliss would spray a total of 30 sites with his oil. Bliss sprayed the dirt roads of Times Beach many times over the years. It wasn't until November of 1982, more than 10 years after Russell Bliss first picked up the contaminated oil, the city clerk got a call about the high dioxin levels at other sites. They told Marilyn Leisner, who was recently hired into the city council, who took it upon herself to interview the townsfolk of Times Beach. The stories they told were extremely concerning. One family she recalled told their weekly routine to pick up the corpses of dead birds and other animals out of their backyard. Migraines and nosebleeds were very common, and others described a smell similar to a high school chemistry experiment. Some of them fled, scared that there was something wrong with the water. After reaching a conclusion that their roads were most likely contaminated, in November of 1982, Leisner and the city officials called the Environmental Protection Agency, requesting them to come and test their roads. The EPA said that they would test as soon as next year. But that made Leisner and the city officials worry that something wouldn't be done soon enough. They began raising money to conduct their own test. 
Of course, as soon as the EPA got wind of that, they came in and tested immediately. It wasn't soon enough. On December 5th, less than a month after testing, a massive flood brought the Merrimack more than 20 feet higher. The dioxins were washed across the town, and those who didn't evacuate beforehand were trapped in their homes and had to be rescued by boat. Not many people stayed in their homes at that point. They were barely finished recovering from the flood when every resident received a letter from the EPA. They called it the Christmas Surprise. On December 23rd, the letter came in stating the dioxin levels measured in November were so dangerous, the town would have to be evacuated immediately. Temporary homes were available and a buyout fund was initiated. In less than a year, the town was deserted. And all that was left were empty houses. Many of them still had their Christmas decorations on display. In 1984, the Environmental Enforcement Section sued Bliss, Nepaco, and Syntex, originally Hoffman and Taff, for six Missouri dioxin sites, at the time not including Times Beach, though it would be added to the lawsuit later. The defense ultimately lost. Syntex filed for bankruptcy during the trial, claiming they were protected in the bankruptcy. They would pay $5 million to the EPA for relief funds and $1 million to the state of Missouri. Over the next few years, the media painted Bliss as a murderer. The words accused polluter were under his name in his first interview. During this process, he claimed numerous times in a dramatic testimony that he did not know the material was toxic. He was quoted saying, I had no idea they were making that stuff in there. It smelled and looked just like oil, just seemed a little heavier. As for a statement to Piat about the crankcase oil, Bliss would mix the oil into different reservoirs after collecting it from thousands of sources, mainly automotive service stations. He didn't think it would cause any problems. He even sprayed his own farm, and when he did, 70 of his chickens died, along with his dog. He was not charged for spraying the oil. Bliss was, however, charged with failure to report wages for his contract workers, owing more than $39,000 in unreported wages to the IRS for his two unofficial businesses. Last checked. He was living in St. James with his son. Today, he would be in his early 80s. Judy Piat would write a book about her dioxin exposure, claiming Bliss killed her horses. She is the only one who claimed that Bliss killed anyone or anything. She passed away in 2013. Gary Overton, the mayor of Times Beach, and Bliss are still friends today. He was the only one who didn't take the buyout from the EPA. After raising the money for the EPA to come and test their roads, Marilyn Leisner would run for mayor the year the town began to evacuate. And she won, and has since become the face of the town. Cleanup in the deserted area began in 1990. The houses were bulldozed after the flood damages. The top layer of soil was removed from the entire town as well as all the other sites of the dioxin contamination. In 1996, an incinerator was built to burn more than 265,000 tons of contaminated materials. By 1999, the cleanup was finished. The site was turned into a park. 
Route 66 State Park is now free to visit by Interstate 44. There are boat ramps for the Merrimack, bike trails, and kids' playgrounds. In 2012, the site was tested one last time, and it was deemed health risk-free. The scenery here is beautiful. It is a great example of Missouri's outdoors. Most of the people who do come here for the scenery pay no mind of the horrors that came from the ground beneath their feet.